Thanks, Alicia. It's great to see everyone this morning uh, as we celebrate uh, Mother's Day together. Uh, I'm going to ask God to just help us as we think about God's Word and we reflect on this day we call Mother's Day uh, and think about why it is that we celebrate Mother's Day. So please join with me as we pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can gather this morning. We thank you for your Word that you speak to us, that you help us to think through uh, what we do in the world and why things are the way they are. And as we, particularly today, as we celebrate Mother's Day, uh, help us to think about why it is that we do that and help us to think about Mother's Day from your perspective uh, and to learn from Moses and his mother and in particular learn from you and your word. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you got an outline on the way in. That'll help you uh, keep track of where we're up to. James, if you could get me the clicker, I'll just uh, be able to flick through some slides and you'll see where uh, we'll work through the outline. It'll come up on the screen there. Uh, but we live in an age where gender distinctions are being minimised and where economics and the way all that sort of stuff plays out are undermining our thoughts about family life. And when we look at uh, the public holidays we have each year, there seems to be fewer and fewer people actually get to take them as public holidays. Fewer and fewer things close for public holidays. And so we come to a day today of Mother's Day, and it's a good question to ask, why do we celebrate Mother's Day? That's not a public holiday. Um, you know, it's not a, a day off that costs shareholders and uh, money. In fact, most money uh, for, uh, it actually makes money for retailers, doesn't it? Retailers love that we have a thing called Mother's Day. All the sales of presents and cards and flowers and chocolate and chocolate and chocolate. <laughs> but still, why celebrate Mother's Day? Uh, it's not a super old tradition or custom. Uh, Mother's Day as we have it today was created and promoted by this lady, uh, Anna Jarvis, in 19, from, it started in 1907. Uh, Anna Jarvis was a Christian lady, uh, an American, uh, and she started Mother's Day celebrations on the second Sunday in May uh, as an en on the anniversary of her own mother's death. But still the question of, why is it that we're still celebrating Mother's Day uh, 115 years on from when Anna Jarvis started the second Sunday in May? Well, one reason is retail. Retail. Uh, the retail industry loves it, don't they? They promote Mother's Day. They don't want to miss out on it. Uh, the only awkward thing for retailers is it's so close on the back of Easter, they really can't start until they get rid of the hot cross buns, right? So they've got to n navigate that, but they love it. And Anna Jarvis actually spent the last 25 years of her life protesting against the commercialization of the Mother's Day that she'd created. Uh, she clearly lost, but ironically, it meant Mother's Day has been promoted ever since. But apart from retailers, I don't know anybody who celebrates Mother's Day because it's a good money spinner. Here's maybe a better one, a better reason, recognition. We celebrate Mother's Day because intuitively we know our mothers deserve recognition. They deserve gratitude for their sacrificial service to us. Now generally, day by day, uh, society ignores mothers. Or worse, puts them down. Oh, she's just a mother. Uh, there's no pay in mothering. No honours, no advancement, no career path, no social significance. All the kind of things that we expect from any job, from any working job, particularly a hard and difficult one that's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, a Canberra journalist wrote, there's no career path for housewives, housewives, no advances, bonuses or emails of congratulations, well done. There's no job satisfaction in housewifery except for a clean house and a happy husband. Now, for men amongst us, the idea of a happy husband doesn't sound too bad. Uh, but for the writer, that was an awful thing. 
It wasn't a positive. A another journalist described motherhood this way. Pregnancy is difficult. Childbirth is painful. Breastfeeding takes skill and patience. Mothering can be tedious. And fathers don't do their share of the housework. Uh, and so, yet, we celebrate Mother's Day. We celebrate Mother's Day because mothering deserves praise. We celebrate it because actually we're all involved, aren't we? And we all, because we've all had mothers one way or another. And so we stop one day of the year to say thank you, uh, to recognise and to remember with gratitude the hard, selfless work our mother has done for us and on our behalf. So retail, recognition. Uh, here's a third one. You might think it a bit of an odd one. Remuneration. Uh, mums go, that's a laugh. Remuneration for motherhood. Um, you know, it's more like maybe mothers should go and join all the unions going on strike in the lead up to the election in search of better pay and working conditions. But remuneration doesn't exist for mothers. Yet, we live in a world that says, well, time is money. And if you're not prepared to pay me, then you don't value my time. You don't value me. And if I'm not valued, why should I bother doing it? Uh, the same Canberra ABC journalist wrote in the article uh, I mentioned earlier, paid work gives meaning to our lives. It gives a sense of purpose and achievement, along with a sense of value. The more we're paid, the more we feel valued. Whereas the unpaid work of a housewife is afforded no value and therefore neither is she. Here's the heart of why we celebrate Mother's Day. It's because mothers are not paid for their job. It's because mothers work constantly out of a deep love and sacrifice for the benefit of their families because mothers are exemplars of love and grace, generously giving themselves to feed and shelter, to protect and to provide and to care for their children. Now back in uh, 2001, uh, the Australian Institute of Families reported that when a high school graduate becomes pregnant, she sacrifices one third one third of her lifetime earnings. It's a huge amount, isn't it? But fancy doing such a calculation. That we see everything must be measured in monetary terms. Uh, yes, there's a cost to mothering. But it's more than money. Uh, there's all the pleasure of... Uh, lifestyle and choices of being in control of your own life. And there's the economic drive of our society adding a, a greater burden and weight of expectation upon our mothers. Uh, there's actually a whole movement called the Child Free Movement uh, where it's, it's uh, premised on a deliberate decision not to have children. I'm not talking about people who, for whatever reason, are not able to have children but going, actually, for my own lifestyle, for my own freedom, for my own pleasure, for my own material gain, we're gonna, I'm going to stay child-free. Well, why are we celebrating Mother's Day? <coughs> uh, three things. Uh, one, well, maybe not we, but we do as a society because retailers love it. Uh, we do it because we want to recognise mother's sacrifice. And we celebrate mothers because of the remuneration, the cost that mothers bear. Now, what I'd like to do now is uh, almost run through those three things again, but learning le the lessons of those things from Moses and his mother from the two Bible readings we had uh, in Exodus and Hebrews. <coughs> uh, so in our Bible readings today, we heard about Moses. In the Old Testament, we read of Moses' mother, uh, her name wasn't uh, mentioned in what Elisha read to us, but if you keep reading on a little bit more in Exodus, you find out her name is Jochebed. Uh, she and her husband, classic parents, uh, but they lived in Egypt at the time. Pharaoh was the ruler, and Pharaoh put out this decree that all the Jewish babies, all the babies of the, the Israelite children of the Israelites, 
uh, needed to be killed. Uh, Jochebed wasn't going to give her baby boy up. So what did she do? Uh, We read she made a basket. Uh, She hid him in the reeds of the river. Uh, Classic mother, uh, risking her life to protect her young. It's a beautiful thing. When Pharaoh's daughter comes along to the river, she finds the baby. She goes, oh, this is a, even though it's a Jewish boy that she knows should be killed, she takes pity on him. She brings him into the palace, into Pharaoh's palace, as we heard. And then Moses' sister, Moses' big sister, organises for, her mother, for Moses' mother, Jochebed, to be Moses' wet nurse and to be paid to look after her own child. Um, if you're the sort of person who loves undermining authority, this is an awesome story, isn't it? <clears throat> uh, you have to love Moses' mum being paid by Pharaoh who wanted Moses killed. She gets paid to raise him. Now it gets to a stage when Moses is put into Pharaoh's household. He goes in as the son of uh, Pharaoh's daughter. And it's quite extraordinary. Yet, it really is an ordinary event. Ordinary because it shows the nature of a mother's love. A love that mothers all around the world have for their children. A love that reminds us there's more to having a child than money and pleasure or safety. Uh, so retail is a reason that we, our society celebrates Mother's Day, but a mother's life is more than retail. Mothering is not a, a retail transaction. Uh, we, you might want to joke that we, we learn a lot about retail transactions from our mothers, retail therapy and the like. But motherhood is about more than materialism, more than matter, more than uh, the touchable things of this world. Uh, Nobody has a child so there's someone to look after them in their old age. Uh, Children may look after their uh, mother in old age, but that's a consequence of having children, not a reason to have children. Mothers like Moses' mother, Jochebed, uh, they value life, the life that they bring into the world, and they value that life beyond their money, beyond their safety, beyond uh, even their own life. For mothers, life is more than materialism. And when when we got to the Hebrews reading, we see that Moses had learnt this lesson, uh, presumably from his mother. He recognised that life was more than money or possessions, more than pleasure or comfort or fame or power. Because whose household had he been taken into? Pharaoh's. He'd been raised as the son of Pharaoh. He's the prince of Egypt, as the movie title sings. But he forgoes that. Because it's not about possessions and money. Which he learned from his mother. Motherhood is not about a retail transaction. Uh, So if uh, we turn to the verses there in uh, Hebrews, by faith Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. Like mother, like son. Moses wasn't living for this world only. He saw there were bigger issues than wealth and there were greater issues than power and there is more to life than success in this world and there's more to life than materialism. And that living for something more than the material things of this world, that that is actually profoundly human. Why? Why? Because he recognised motherhood is part of God's created order. To put aside your life for the good of others, particularly within the family, especially for the sake of your own children. This is the role of mothers. In many respects, that's what we expect from them. Uh, Certainly far too often we take it for granted about our mothers. But nothing is more human than a mother caring for her children. And so Mother's Day reminds us of our debt of gratitude 
and our care for and care for our mothers. But, but it's actually a celebration that those who don't live for anything beyond themselves, well, they don't appreciate it. And they don't participate in it. Unless they're one of the retailers trying to make money out of it. Because that's what they do appreciate. So this was Anna Jarvis's great hurt. She chose the second Sunday of the month of May for the celebration of Mother's Day because it was the anniversary of her mother's death. She was the one who celebrated it with flowers. Uh, everyone got a flower, uh, male or female, young or old. You had a red one or a white one, depending on whether your mother was still alive or not. And she called upon people to spend time with their mother. But of course, the retail opportunity kicked in for people to make money out of flowers. And so rather than spend time with mothers, you send cards to your mother. And there's the materialistic attitude to life that's reflected in so many aspects of our society. And it comes from this uh, atheism, this thinking that what matters are the things of this world and the things of this world only. A way of thinking that sees that the, the, the universe, as we can see, touch and feel it, is all that matters. There's, there is no God. There's just the things that, that, that are around us. But thankfully, in God's goodness, motherhood speaks out against that way of thinking. It speaks out against the, the grabbing of material things. Because motherhood denies the, the, the nonsense of both of those. I want to illustrate it with uh, one case in point. Uh, you may have heard of this man. He's an Australian uh, uh, atheist and he's an, an ethicist and a philosopher. Sorry about all those big terms. His name is Peter Singer. That's pretty easy to remember. Uh, he's a professor of bioethics at Princeton University. Uh, in the world of philosophy and uh, thinking about social issues, uh, he's, he's a very famous sort of guy. And if you start reading his stuff, he's someone to be, if you get to check him out, he's someone that's wor is very admirable. He's a clever man. He writes really, really well. And the thing that he does that's uh, uh, really noble is that he works hard to think out logically, how do I hold this position and live it out practically? Um, so he's not, uh, so he's committed atheist. He's committed to the things of this world. What we touch is all that there is in the universe. And he argues from a consist, for a consistent approach to our ethics and life. So he argues that because there is no God, it's false to think that humans are created in God's image. You can't be created in God's image because there's no God. Right? So he argues that. And so he argues that in, in the Western Christianized culture that we live in, we have to stop thinking of humans as having a special place in the world and having value by virtue of their existence. That's his argument. And so he addresses real-life issues that we live with and struggle with, trying to put his atheism into practice. He's particularly famous about on animal rights issues. He's particularly loud and outspoken on issues of abortion, of euthanasia, and of infanticide, so killing born, born children uh, being put to death. Uh, so he's not just an academic... He works to put his conclusions into practice and he calls on community and he works with and he works for governments calling for change in society in line with his thinking. But he hit a problem. Peter Singer's mother was an Alzheimer's sufferer and on his philosophy, she was no longer fit to live. Because an, as, as an Alzheimer's sufferer, she'd lost her personhood. And the world's resources should not be wasted on someone who's not fully human. And someone who's lost their mental capacity and their physical ability is now, in accordance with him, no longer fully human. She should have been euthanized. Uh, or, if you want to try and put it more politely, voluntary assisted dying should have taken place. Reality, 
perhaps he should have been killed. Yet Peter Singer spent large amounts of money doing the exact reverse, keeping her alive. When he was challenged about his contradiction by a reporter, uh, he sighed and he explained, I'm not the only person involved in making decisions about my mother. Peter Singer has a sister. He did say if it was solely responsible, if he was solely responsible for his mother, she might not be alive today. It's fairly sickening, isn't it? But when it came down to it, there was, a, there was, there was more to it. Uh, in the New Yorker, a famous uh, uh, paper in, in America, uh, a journalist reported Peter Singer saying, I think this situation with my mother has made me see that someone with these kinds of problems is something very different. Perhaps it's more difficult than I thought before because, hear this, because it is different when it is your mother. Fortunately, the great atheist is too human to be a great atheist, to try and live by his unlivable, inhumane, unethical doctrines that are sadly now being promoted in our society to be taught in our schools. Because he goes and he crashes into this great boulder, this great rock wall. It is different when it's your mother. What speaks loudest in the world of the specialness of human life? Motherhood. Even the great atheist of our day can see it. And this is where we come back to the idea of remuneration. See, motherhood is profoundly Christian. Motherhood is not about a cost-benefit analysis. Motherhood is a woman who lays down her life for the sake of another. It's the woman whose life, whole life is saying there is more to life than materialism. The woman who brought, brought, brought you to birth and nursed you and raised you and cares for you to the very end. That's why motherhood is so profoundly Christian. See, the very foundation of the Christian faith is Jesus Christ personally bearing the cost for the sake of another. For God who created the world created human beings in his image and he made us through mothers and the character of the creator God is grace and love and grace and love, the grace and love that we see not only in mothers but we see especially in the sending, in his sending his own son into the world to lay down his life for his people. Moses knew that suffering with God's people was preferable to enjoying the pleasures of the palace of Pharaoh. Jesus came and he did more than suffer with God's people. Jesus suffered for God's people, literally laying down his life for us. And so in the next chapter of Hebrews, we read, Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus, like Moses, like Moses' mother, didn't live for himself. He lived for us, laying down his life for us. And motherhood is an expression of our creator's pattern for life. It's hard. It's difficult. It's costly. Sacrificial living for the benefit of others, not for remuneration, but out of love and out of grace. Jesus is an expression of our creator's method uh, of redemption. Hard, difficult, costly, sacrificial dying for the benefit of others. Not for remuneration, but out of love and out of grace. Motherhood is profoundly Christian because it's part of the creator in his creation. Mother's life is more than the material things. Which is why today, with gratitude, 
we recognise our mother's gift of life for us, not just with our lips and presence, but with our lives. For she's taught us that there's more to life than retail gifts and presents. And it's why today and every day recognises our Saviour's gift of his life for us, not just with our lips, but also with our lives. For he has bought us and he has brought us to new birth by his blood, through his resurrection and the pouring out of his spirit into our lives. Let's pray. Father, we thank and praise you for the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you that in him and his actions we're not only saved, but we see your character of love and of grace. We thank and praise you, Heavenly Father, that there is more to life than just this material world, the gathering of its possessions and pleasures. We thank you that we see this in your created order in our mothers, in the lives they've lived for us, for our benefit, the sacrifices they've made for us and on our behalf, that we can see in motherhood that there is more to life than the material things of this world, that we can see in motherhood something of your character and nature, and that we see in motherhood why it would be that you would send your son into this world, for you are so loving and so gracious. And so we pray, Heavenly Father, not only that we would give thanks to you and to our mothers for their life and service of us, but that we would see in our mothers sacrifice something of your character and of your son's great sacrifice. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we continue to reflect on God's word, we're going to stand and sing together.